Hi everyone, this is Fabi here and today we'll be talking about the compare mode of capture and compare modules which are capable of outputting signals with modifiable duty cycle, hence the name pulse width modulation. If you're new to the channel, this video is part of an educational series I'm doing called Embedded Systems Explained and the aim of the series is to explain embedded systems in a simple to understand manner and with examples so that you know where these concepts are used in the real world. I will put a link to the playlist in the pinned comment, so if you want to learn more, make sure to watch those videos as well. Quickly before jumping to today's video, I want you guys to hear a quick message from today's sponsor, PCBWay. Special thanks to PCBWay, which is a one-stop shop for all your PCB prototyping, 3D printing and CNC machining needs. Click the link in the description to buy 5 PCBs with 2 to 4 day shipping for under $30. I've personally used PCB Way before being sponsored by them to order PCBs for myself and over a hundred colleagues from university for a class project and the interaction with them has always been great, same as with the quality of the delivered PCBs. No matter how complex your PCB requirements are, PCB Way has got you covered. While we talked about the compare mode briefly in the first video of the series, because outputting PVMs is so important in the embedded systems world, I feel like it's very important to go into a bit more detail. I will also show you towards the end of the video how easy it is to experiment with PVMs and the MSP430 G2 launchpad. Capture and compare modules are auxiliary to timers and in architectures like the MSP430 we have up to 6 associated capture and compare modules per timer, whereas in architectures like the PIC microcontrollers we have capture and compare modules which can be associated with different timers. Either way, you have a set of registers governing the timer and then a set of registers which belong to the capture and compare module. Obviously, in order to be able to use the CCP, short for capture and compare module, to output a PVM, the timer which is used by the CCP has to be configured. This mostly means setting the clock source, the prescaler and the count mode. The easiest way to generate a PVM is to use the up mode for the count mode. In this mode, the timer counts up to a certain value which we set and the time it takes for the timer to count up to this value is how long our signals period will be. The clock source and the prescaler are important for our PVM signal because these two parameters along with the value the timer counts up to are going to define our signal's frequency or period. If we were to choose continuous mode for our count mode for example, the value we set our timer to count up to would become irrelevant because our timer would always count up to its maximum value, hence the name continuous mode. This would severely limit our freedom in setting the frequency of the signal with the clock source and the prescaler remaining the only two parameters we would have at hand. As far as the capture and compare module goes, here you first have to choose whether you want it to work in the capture or the compare mode. With the help of the capture mode, we can determine the frequency of a signal, its duty cycle, or simply how long a pulse lasts. Instead, with the compare mode, you specify a value which is then compared to the value the timer has counted up to. When these two values match, you can set the CCP to generate an interrupt or to toggle an output signal. This toggling of an output signal is precisely what allows us to generate PVMs. This is how the first edge of the signal, which is variable in time, is generated. The other edge, as already mentioned, is generated by the CCP when the value set in the timer's register is reached by the timer. So with the CCP module, you will first have to set the bits for it to work in the compare mode and then also set the output mode. This means that once you set everything up, the capture and compare module will be generating the PVM signal automatically without any extra intervention. While it is true that you could generate the PVM yourself by toggling the output signal when the interrupts are being generated, this is just not necessary. The output mode defines what happens to the output signal when the two thresholds we talked about are being reached by the timer. As you can see from the screenshot I took from the user guide of the MSP430 G2553 microcontroller, four output modes can be useful when generating PVMs. Toggle reset, set reset, toggle set, and reset set. 
The output signal will have an edge when the timer reaches the value set in the capture and compare module and also when it reaches the value set in the timer itself. The way we change the width of the pulse or the duty cycle is by changing the value set in the CCP register. Now let's apply what we learned and generate a PVM using our MSP430 G2 launchpad. Using the existing button on the launchpad we will increase the duty cycle of the signal by 10% with each press. You can briefly see the code on the screen right now, but you'll be able to copy and modify the code yourself through a GitHub link in the description. One thing to keep in mind is that all of this code was put together using code examples from DI with just slight modifications. Apart from the G2 launchpad, we will also be using a DSO 150 hobby oscilloscope which at the moment retails for less than $50 on Amazon. You can find a link for buying this as well as for buying the launchpad in the description down below. This oscilloscope does limit the frequency of the signal we can measure to about 15-20 kHz, but this is plenty for what we want to do. If you're not constrained by the budget, I'll also leave a link for a Siglent oscilloscope which retails at around $500, but it is absolutely worth the price. If you don't have an oscilloscope, you can also test using the onboard LED. The way the change in duty cycle can be seen in this case is by the change in intensity of the light because the average voltage level at the pin changes. The software has two components, both of which are taken from the very useful code examples TI provides for each microcontroller. The first is the timer, CCP and port setup and the second one is the port interrupt which allows us to change the duty cycle of the PVM. In order to set the period of the PVM signal, we use the following formula when working in up mode. Our clock frequency is 1 MHz and with the value of 1000 we set, we get a period of about 1 millisecond. With the value for the capture and compare register at 500, using the following formula we get a duty cycle of 50%. Using the formula we talked about before, you will easily see that changing the value in the CCP register with our current settings by 100 will change the duty cycle by 10%. This is exactly what we do in the interrupt on port 1. Ok, so by pressing the button on the board, we increase the duty cycle by 10% and when it reaches 90%, the next step will be to jump back down to 10%. You can see on the oscilloscope that the duty cycle changes when I press the button, but the frequency stays the same. And to give you some examples where PVMs are useful, you can control the speed of a motor, you can control the direction of a servo motor, the intensity of the light emitted by an LED, or even the loudness of a buzzer. Anyways, I hope this video helped you learn more about PVMs. If it did, I sure would appreciate it if you liked this video, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more content in the future. Peace out.